Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity Open P1AM Industrial Arduino Variables Data Types. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So on my screen here you'll see we have six different types of data that we can actually use in our productivity using productivity blocks. And we have boolean which represents an on off. We have an integer which represents a number either positive or negative. We have a long which uh, indicates a very long number. Um, in this case here you can see we have uh, one million. We have a, a double and the double is uh, floating point math, a double floating point. Then we have character, which represents actual individual letters or numbers that represent the ASCII equivalent. And then we have string variables. And these are the six types that we can use again with our productivity blocks. So the first thing we should actually do is actually look and see um, how, how we actually make up a number or a numbering system per se. So on my first slide here, we have a decimal system, which is what we're accustomed to using. And in the decimal system, we have actually 10 different symbols, zero to nine, which are the 10 symbols that we have. And then we will take a number such as uh, 1,732. And what, that, what that's actually equivalent to is one times 10, and the 10 represents the number of symbols that we have here, to the power of three, because it's the third digit over. That's zero, one, two, and three. It's the third digit over. So that's equal to 1,000 when we multiply that out. So one times 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. So one times 1,000 equals 1,000 right here. The next number is a seven. And with the seven, again, we go seven times 10, which is the number of symbols to the power of two, which is the placeholder that we have here. So zero, one, two, which is our seven. So seven times 10 times 10 was 100. Seven times 100 is 700. And then we have a three, it's the next placeholder. And it's three times 10 to the power of one. Because it's the uh, first placeholder, so zero, one. So three times 10 is 30. And then finally, we have the first position, which is two, so two times 10 to the power of zero. Now, anything to the power of zero is always equal to one. So we have two times one, which is two. So we add these up and we get 1,732. So we just prove basically that 1,732 is equal to 1,732 in decimal. Now, what really makes this interesting is we understand that only in microprocessors, um, we they only understand ones and zeros. So let's take a number from a ones and zeros point of view and break that out in the same metho methodology that we just used for the decimal numbering system. And when we, and we do, we call this the binary system. And the symbols, again, are zero and one. So if we take a number like 1111, then it's equal to one, which is our first one here, times two, which is the two symbols, to the power of three, which is the third place over. So two times two times two is eight. So one times eight is equal to eight. Then our next one is one times two to the power of two, which is the zero, one, two, this placeholder. And so it's two times two is four. So one times four is four. Then we have one times two to the one, representing this digit right here, is one times two, which is equal to two. And then we have finally in the first placeholder here, one times two to the power of zero, anything to the power of zero is equal to one. So one times one is one. Then we add that up and we end up with a value of 15. So if we take that, those four bits that we just used at first and kept them as a group and labeled them with 15, uh, uh, 16 actually different digits, then what we can see is that we would normally have a hexadecimal system. So each one of these uh, digits here in hexadecimal represent 
the um, four bits that we just saw in our decimal numbering system or our binary numbering system. So that means that hexadecimal is only used to represent a binary numbering system or binary numbering bits. So we just see what the bits are. So if we take a look at this number here, FFFF, it actually represents four, eight, 12, 16 bits of information that we have. So 16 bits long, we can represent by four digits on a hexadecimal numbering system. And our symbols will go from zero to F. F represents 15, zero represents zero. So we have 16 different locations. So in order to get uh, the value of this, we'll take 15, which is what F represents, times 16, because 16 different symbols, to the power of three, zero, one, two, three. So we have it right here. So 15 times 16 to the third is equal to 61,440. 15 times 16 uh, to the power of two for the second place uh, position is 3,840. 15 times 16 to the one is 240. And 15 times 16 to the power of zero, which is equal to one, so 15, is equal to 15. If we add that up, we have 6,500. Or 65,535. So that is what this represents as a decimal numbering system. So we actually have uh, another, another way of we can do that is if we call up the actual Windows calculator and under the Windows calculator, I'll just find it here, um, we will actually see, here it is, there's my Windows calculator. If we go to view and we go programmer, it will actually show me the bits here that we have and we can put in a numbering, a numbering or digit. Let's put in the one we just did here because we're under decimal and we'll put in 65535. And you can see here, my bits are all on here. That's my, my binary. If I go to hex, you can see it represents FFFF. So again, we have uh, tools here that can actually show us exactly what those bits are within our controller that we're manipulating. So let's go back to now to, um, we've discussed this before on in ACC automation and what everyone ought to know about programmable logic controllers. So we talked about binary base two and we went through the significant bits and we went through the hexadecimals representing that and there are our um, decimal and binary equivalents. Then we talked about what ASCII is, which is American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And what it does is take two nipples, which is um, equivalent of four bits together, and it will describe a, uh, a value that we can, can do or a symbol that we have on our our keyboard, for example. So the letter, the character A, capital A, is equal to 41 uh, hexadecimal, which is equal to that in binary. And a small a is 61 in, in a uh, hexadecimal, which is that equivalent to this in binary. And then just like the character is 5, is 35 in hex and this. So every time you hit something on your keyboard, it actually uses eight bits of data representing that symbol that we're actually using. So in our Arduino reference language, we actually have, we go down to variables in our data types, you'll see that we have several different data types that we can do. A lot of them will say signed or unsigned. And again, if we go back to our website, it actually will talk about, if we go down here, the signed and unsigned variables that it uses the last bit and utilizes two's complement to actually uh, do those negative numbers, which is two complements right there. And just for your reference, if we have double, double precision floating point, we have a reference for a double precision floating point to figure out exactly what those numbers are. And then we are ASCII table is located right here 
And all, again, all these links are on our website at accautomation.ca. So let's take that down. Let's just close that down. Take our calculator. And so where are these constants on our productivity blocks? Well, they're right under our variable types right here. And you see here, we can set our integer. We can set our long. So there's a Boolean. So let's drag our Boolean. We can put this under setup. And now we've got a variable called Boolean variable and we have high. If you want to verify that, we come up here and you can see here that it represents in C++ code. Our Boolean variable is false. And you see here that we currently set it that Boolean variable to high. If we want, we could add a integer and our integer will leave at zero. And now if we verify that, again, here's our integer variable is equal to zero. And, our in, and right here in our setup, we say our integer, inter, 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 integer variable is equal to zero. So again, it dictates exactly what are those values will be. So that's exactly how we program in here. Now let's do, um, we're gonna introduce another feature that we have with um, Arduino, and that is to use a serial communication. And zero, serial communication starts with a baud configure and a port. So I'm gonna close this down. And what we have is a, close this one down, is we have a pre-configured example of a sketch, which is a program. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set an integer to the value of minus 10. We're going to start our serial communication and our baud rate will be 11,000 or 115,200. We're gonna do serial, eight data bits, no parity, one stop bit. And we're going to the monitor port which is a built-in instruction just to go to the serial of the Arduino and put the values out. So then we're gonna have a if else condition and we're gonna go off our CPU switch like we did last time. And if it's, if it's the condition is, um, is the variable, if it's less than 10, then we're going to print the number and we're not going to cause new line. We're going out the monitor port. Then we're going to print a string, which is just a uh, an ASCII, which will be the backslash. Again, no uh, new line, and that's going out the monitor port too. Then we're going to add one to the integer value, and then store it back into the integer value itself. So remember, we started off at negative ten. As long as it's under ten. So while we're doing this and the switch is on, we'll continuously do this. Then once we get 10, then we go to the else condition. And under the else condition, we'll take the, the value. And if it's not equal to uh, minus 10, then we're going to set it to minus 10. And then we're gonna put in the string an asterisk. On, under our port and we're going to start a new line. So that is our entire program. So if we look at this through actually C++ code, here's what it looks like. And what you'll see here is my digital read. Then we have our serial port set up. Then if we have uh, a value less than 10, then what we're doing is we're printing our value plus we're adding one to it each time. Then else what we're going to do is we're going to reset it back to minus 10 and we're going to print an asterisk. Now in order to see the, uh, the actual uh, stuff we're putting out the monitor port, we have a serial monitor selection up here in the corner. We'll just select it and it pops up our serial monitor port. So now let's look at our actual hardware. And you can see here that I have my productivity open P1AM-100. 
and we have it connected to our power supply providing it 24 volts to the actual unit itself. So my program has been downloaded and ready to operate. So what I will do now is take my switch that we have and we know that if we turn on our switch, it does exactly what we want it to. It says minus 10, then it goes minus nine because it's adding one each time. Back up until it gets to nine because it has to be less than 10, so 10 would be equal. Then, if I turn the switch off, it resets that variable and puts an asterisk on that same line. So now, when I turn it back on again, we'll start a new line and do the same thing. And sure enough, exactly is what it's doing, is what we programmed it to do. So we can do that. And you can see here, this is a quick way of actually looking at variables as our program is executed. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.